you can see this list here that I was in the process of trying to make these and there's a lot of trial and a lot of error and I was going through a lot of patty and I was buying patty from California because it's seed and I was paying ten dollars a pound so I spent two or three hundred dollars on nothing but patty then I ran they ran out and so I sent her a note and Anna sent me 50 pounds of patty Paul Kyle sent me 15 Sean Welters, Sean stand up he saved my life he, he said he was more than willing to send rice in exchange for a small tabletop holder. We'll go into that later. And then Eric Andrews, he gave me about 30 pounds. So we met, he saw the very first one where I used uh, uh, spur gears. So technical help, Andy Cloud in the back. Stand up, Andy. Come on. Stand up. Well, he looks like he's standing, but he really isn't. <laughs> Then uh, my son Josh, his girlfriend Meadow, and my wife Becky, which is somewhere out here. She's over in the corner. So I got done with one project for my daughter and her partner. And then Josh says, Dad, I got a problem. I'm growing rice. I don't know how to process it. And everything I see is between 5,000 and more for a good hauler. And then for a separator, you're looking at $10,000, $12,000. So for those of you growing rice, that's a, that's a hard step because you might not be growing a lot. So maybe you guys will figure out some kind of cooperatives. So one, after I talked to Josh, did a little research, and then I was at Jan and Andy's house on uh, New Year's Eve-ish for a little get together and I showed up with the first hauler. And that's how I got him hooked, trying to help me solve this problem. Of, how to build a hauler where people can afford it. Because I, if you're growing 200 pounds of rice, you're not going to spend $20,000 to process it. So let's, where's my clicker? Which way do I do it? I have no idea. <laughs> that one? This is just, all right, all I'm trying to remove is the husk, right? So here's what we developed. We've got a thresher. That's over there. And turns out there's two over here that are probably better than this one. This one you could build yourself, and I'll show you how, for $50. That's $50 in parts. We've got, uh, I put hulling, dehulling, dehusking, because these words are all interchanged. And we developed a hand one, a bike one, and a small motor. Winnowing. We're just using either a household fan or a blower, and I'll show you the two kinds of fans to make sure you figure out a, a blower is very directional. And uh, I use a dryer motor as an impeller to actually suck air through my system. Uh, for separating, like I said, very difficult. When you go in and look at the patents, the history of rice milling, separating is their slow spot. So they always have to have a lot of separators. So we did work on it. All right, thresher. So this thresher, can you get me over here on your camera? Yeah. Can you get this far? So this is basically some one by four, one by five. Now we think this wood is too wide. So you want to go look at the one in there and match it. I think we're going to narrow this down because when the rice is hitting this, we're not getting this edge effect. So we'd like to have gaps in here. And I'm powering it with a bicycle. I'm not using a treadle. This was just real simple. Now I'll show you how to make that circle because that's the difficult thing. Going too fast? You all right? I'm OK. All right. So at Lowe's, they sell these for $8. It's already a circle. You don't have to cut plywood. So you buy two of these, you got $16 into your system, right? So you take this thing, and it's got a nice edge. I'm sure it's machine made. You measure it, and then you pick your center. And you might have to measure it a couple times. But this one, I'm using 5 8 rod, just right out of the store. 5 8 rod. I run it in here. 
The wood that's on there, again, from the hub, from your lumber store, I lay this down, I cut a whole bunch of pieces, and I lay them around the outside so I know where I'm going to put them, and then I cut a straight edge just with my saw. Then my other piece, I put this on top of it, I mark like A or B, so all of these cuts are more or less close. And this is just, I don't have that good of skill, so I did that. So now the next question is, we have this rod coming through. One of the ways is to take a pulley, attach it on the inside. Now see, I have a set screw here. I can drill through this and lock it in. So this, is, this would be the rod, right? It goes in the shaft. And I'm like that. I can have this inside if I want to. I also now, uh, my source for pricing everything and delivery on this was McMaster Car, which everybody can, has access to on the internet. These are sleeve bushings. So you get a sleeve bushing, you, you could drill this hole out to match the three quarter inch sleeve bushing. This goes in, and then your shaft goes in here. And then that's all the frame, that's pretty obvious. I won't go through that. For the wire, so we had some political campaigns. So I repurposed the wire from political sites. Oh, yeah. So I probably have 50 of these now. So you take this, you cut it to your length, and you just bend it. You run it through your holes. You, I practiced. I ran it through the holes. Then you just take it and bend it on the inside, and now it can't come out. Pretty simple. All right, so that's the thresher. So you can still buy it. And there are a couple out there that are treadle that are really good. There's one of those out there. The, your, you brought one, right? A treadle? What does that cost? With shipping, it costs about 1000 bucks. So this is yours? This is the one you bought? Yeah. This brand? Ah, yeah. OK. And it works, right? It works well? Yeah. Great. Now mine, this one's not going to work as well as that, because if I were you, if you wanted to build your own, go look at his, match this with the wire. You know, make it thinner wood. What the guy said was he took a Chinese design. He bought some Chinese ones that weren't made very well, but had a good design. And he and a local mechanic had sold, he said, about 200 of those. And he, they, he said very good. it seems to be true. They got to the point where they're pretty well made. Now the one on the farm here has some kind of flywheel in it, and it's phenomenal for power. All right, centrifugal haulers. They exist. I've wired a guy in India, this company, I wired them a little over $1,000 the end of April to have this, to get it here by this conference. August 25th, it was supposedly put on a slow boat from India. It takes a long time, but it, we might actually get it. We're not sure. I'm going through a friend of mine that imports. But supposedly it'll do oats, and Josh wants to do oats, and oats are tough. So I just wanted to say it does exist, and at the next conference, if Josh has it, he can bring it. I have one of those, too. I have one of those. Oh, yeah? And what would you say? Good? It works well? Um, it works. Uh, it works? <laughs> How tired do you get? You that get... works very well. OK. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That works very well. It's a little bit, you, your model may be uh, more uh, better fabricated. It, it looks the same, but it's pretty flimsy. The Are you talking about that or the one before? This one. This one. Oh. This may be heavy, may be cast iron, it may be, I'm assuming, you know, they've got a foundry and they keep making yeah, the same not, thing for a hundred years. But uh, we'll see. Because what we would do, we would try to hook a motor up to it. The one you have, could you hook a motor up to it if you wanted I to? No. But one could. Yeah. Get it spinning? All right, and here's this part about the hauler. So I'm a hauler. These things are really important, turns out. It's not my fault if the machine doesn't haul his rice because he has a lot of immature rice in there. So I just wanted to say 
That, that's my caveat. I have an excuse. Here's the principle of it. Both of these, all three of them, work on opposing rollers. You can read it there, one going a little faster than the other. The, uh, it's pretty straightforward. And the industry likes this one. This is opposing rollers is what the big mills use. These rollers, this would come off of a commercial unit. This is six inch. This one is six inches. They tend to run, which is surprising, all the same on the width. They run about eight and three quarters, which must be a some metric number, and 10 inches. Now they'll run these at um, 1,700 RPM, 3,500 RPM. So they use two wheels of different diameters at the same speed rather than two wheels of the same diameter? Different same diameter, right? So the same diameter. Same. You're just doing this. Right? Speeds. Right. And what's right. And what I found, which wasn't intuitive to me, that the one that you're running fast, yeah. it's actually doing all of the work. It's doing 99%. This one, okay, so I'm running this one at seven or four or five hundred RPM is what I do. It's running, it's put it's trying to pull this. So you have to have them both running to draw the rice down. But this one's going a little slow. So you get a shear effect right there. What's the ratio, do you know, or is it just kind of... It is, right, that's the number. Some people were at 70%. I run, I ended up going 50 because I got a better yield, right? I'm running at about 90% or greater, and that took running this thing, the slow one, slower. But it means you're not running the volume slower. So basically one pulley, one, one pulley drive, one's half the size of the other, or...? Exactly. That's, and we'll, we've got a pulley set up. That's exactly how you do it. it. It's almost, and that's what I was saying to the people I talked to. Once I show you how to do this, you'll go, ah, that's pretty clear. This is how we do it. This is the only literature I found that could claim how long one of these rolls would last. And it's hard to believe. So I have a six inch roll. They're saying, 2,000 times, There's, it's a nonsense number to say we do 200,000 tons. Well, that's not happening. So they'll last a long time, but there's no way they're doing 200 tons. Somewhere, somebody made a mistake. So I, I give this person credit for that. That's whoever that guy did. Yeah, do the math. There's just no way. All right, so now we're going to go over. The hand holder, I'll just leave this up here. This is how much it costs for parts. So, okay. These machines, all of them have the same basic design. The only difference is the rollers. It's not me, right? So, but everybody has a small, this is the drive one. This will be my fast one. Then you have one, basically twice the size. Then here I have an idler. These are called idlers out here on the end. And what it did is separated. So what I was able to do here by using a chain, I could get this gap set. So I can do a one person system. Uh, Um, right. What, what I did, and what will happen is, I'll explain this one, and then I'll be able to go quickly over there, because this will be the basics. So we have our two opposing rollers. This rod here has a nut here and a nut here, right? So it's a threaded rod all the way through. These are, uh, when you go to buy these, you want to get the ones that have the little plastic insert or they will come loose. Right, so this sets my gap, right? And I can adjust the gap by moving this in or out. What the spring does is that if this thing gets overloaded, the spring will allow this plate, this plate's attached, this one is actually floating. So it'll allow this to just open momentarily and then it'll spring it back. 
And it turned out, I was reading the literature, it's not common, but somebody bragged, some manufacturer bragged about the fact that they had a spring-loaded constant tension so that they could absorb that if some pebble came through, some bolt, something you don't want. Otherwise, these things could lock up or they could rip their unit apart, their uh, rollers. So this side, let me show this. This handle, this came from a boat supply place. When you want to pull your boat in, $8 for the handle. Now, I'm going to show you this, but I'm going to explain this a little later. This is the polyurethane. That when, you're, when these guys bring in their boats, there's rubber rollers and there's polyurethane rollers. And the polyurethane rollers, this is $23 for a foot long. It won't mar their boat. Turns out the durometer on this is very similar to these rolls. These rolls are much harder than I thought. I want to pass this around. When we first started this, Andy knows about this. Ket, a company out of California, and I'm assuming they're out of Japan, really, sells a little tool that when you're in the field, you can crank this and open it up, and there's your little rice. So you can see what you're at, right? This is $100. But I had to buy it because they didn't know how these things worked. So Andy took it, we took it apart. He took it and got the durometer of these rollers, which are softer, so we kind of started on the, the, what? What's the, durometer? the hardness of the rollers. The durometer is the hardness. So then we took it apart and saw, oh, spur gears and how they did it. So this is a little, you just, you put the rice in and you're kind of. <laughs> That doesn't really separate, right. it all sends everything to the bottom, so you just separate it. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it doesn't have a window or anything. No, no, it just goes through and it doesn't do it all, so you turn it over and you do the other side. The idea was, I had, that's where I started, I, I had nothing, right? That's right, you should feel sorry for me. All right, so, What happens on, see the pricing up there? What was interesting was, I thought this should be cheap. But it turns out, everything on here, except the rollers, is identical to over there. So I still have to have the gears, I have to have the chain, I have to have, these are called sprockets, I have to have the idler. Uh, what you're going to find is that, initially I tried to adjust the gap to feed my rice. Turns out that doesn't work, because uh, we did, were at Sean's and he ran uh, 70 pounds of patty through the initial hauler. And we, it was set up a little differently with the belt driving my feeder. I had one big belt. And so I adjusted the gap, but it was feeding fast, so I kept closing it down. It went so, it eventually just ate out the wood. And it just was abrasive. So we had to redesign that and now what I've done is I've added another pulley, and again, differential pulleys, whoever mentioned that. So now my feed, I can change, like I could put a bigger pulley on here, and I could slow this down even more. And up, uh, this is, I, I won't go into the details of this, but I need to control that flow, especially when you're doing it by hand. So we'll go into what this is. So the feed system. So we have shafts. This is a precision shaft. You don't need to use these for the hand holders. You could get 5 8 rod. Get, uh, get the one that's got zinc oxide on it that they've covered. Otherwise, everything gets black. So what I did here, OK? This right here is the sandpaper. So I take a rod. This is a 5 8 hose for a clothes washer. And then I just took epoxy, and I glue this to this surface. And mo most of you saw this running out there. So what happens is my rice is collected here. This 
pulls it up and into my slot. And that's my feed. That's how I control the feed. And then it all just goes through my rollers and out this slot. All right. So that's why it's $200. You still, I tried to say, well, I, we tried. I mean, Sean and Josh and Paul Kyle all got my $30 version. And Josh just basically said it fell apart. <coughs> it did. It just ripped apart. Sean was a little bit more polite, saying, well, you got some work to do. <laughs> Paul Kyle, he must have learned, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> because then it was like, OK, we, we won't. I might go back there if we're really inexpensive and change some parts to plywood, but it's $200, and I, I can't get it any less. That, that's what it's going to be unless you go find your parts from a different source. My pricing is all based on McMaster Car internet pricing. It's all brand new everything, Absolutely. Everything in here is brand new, just off the shelf. Okay, so. Now we're going to talk about the haulers. You have to have this shaft perfectly centered with the outside of this roller. The inside of these is actually not controlled very well. The diameter goes in. This side is wider than this side. I believe they probably make these and then turn them on a lathe to make them true. I don't think. I think that's how they do it because this dimensions aren't the outside dimension isn't exact. So here's what I did to solve my problem. I make this spoke. I then have three set screws. And I'm doing that on both sides. I take this edge. Well, I take a right angle and I measure this and just slowly turn these screws. Just think of putting up a Christmas tree. I'm moving this back and forth. Then I do this side until both sides are perfect. There's a wooden plate that's, that I screw in. That's not done yet. Then I have a little stage and I put a plate in front of it and I spin my plate. And it has to be basically perfect. You're looking at a grain that's only a couple millimeters in diameter. So if you're off a millimeter, it's not going to work. Half of it's going to be wrong. So I do this, and it takes me now, I'm getting pretty good, about 20 minutes to center one of these. If it's your first time, it might take an hour, but you just have to do it. So now that I say I'm centered, I take this wooden plate that's already inside there, and I screw this all together. Here I've notched this. I use this epoxy. This is an industrial grade epoxy. It takes about 15 to 20 hours to cure. And if you don't think epoxy will work, just do a little research. I sold it in 1973. It's very strong. This wood will break down before it does. So what I do, and this is a shear force this way and a compressive force this way. I don't have any tensile, so I'm good. So I fill these slots with the epoxy. And then this shaft has been flattened on a couple of sides. And then I fill this with epoxy. So now I've got shear force, shear force. I have this, but since I flattened it on a couple of sides, it's going to, in order for it to break loose, it would actually have to shear all that epoxy off. It isn't going to do it. Our loads are quite small. Is so that clear? That's good. So, this might sound like a lot of work, but you could do it. All right, so we got the rollers. When you go to build this, you know the size of your rollers. So you know you got to have a gap above and below it. You know that the, the, the wood has to have a gap so that the rollers can come together. All right, that's that. That's that. We talked about that. We'll go over here and we'll go over to this one. Let me bring that tape. We're good on time, right? Yeah. All right. 
So this one's not quite set right. This is the uh, bike off the side of the road. That's my uh, son. He, his girlfriend Meadow found it and said, oh, let's repurpose a bike. So. All right. This one I've set up that I can run it off a bike, or I also have a motor that sits on the ground and comes up here and matches this framing right here. So I can, oh, that's another aside. So Josh has wind and solar panels. So when he has electricity, he wants to run it with a motor. When he doesn't, he wants to run it with a bike. So he has to have that option. So, you know, you gotta please the customer, right? So we're gonna, we can run this off a motor. That's why this is low. This is my high speed, small, right? These belts are called uh, double A's. Most belts have a V belt on one side. This one has it on both sides. So this belt goes up like this. It's going this way, so that makes this one go like that. But now that it's coming down, up, and around, you'll see this one goes, and this one is going about half the speed these are your idlers. And then this is my feed system. I got a small one and a much bigger one. I got to control that speed. Here's a tip. If you ever have to buy a V-belt, all you have to do is take one of these tapes, because it's always an issue. And you just go to the outside. And this is a 27-inch. And this is a 27-inch belt. OK, so that's it. The ones that have links, they're, yeah, they're phenomenally expensive. This is, this is five. Yeah, this is, yeah, that's true. Because I did buy a lot of belts. They are like, these are like five, and then those are like 25. Throw them in the trunk of your car and always have a spare belt. Oh, that's a good idea, just in case. Yeah, yeah, those are those little like links. Yeah, OK. So get yourself a sort of adjustable belt so that when you figure out what size you need, all right, so that's that one. Now this one, I'll go back over here. Uh, let me first say, when you go to get a fan, this is your normal fan, right? But the air gets dispersed like this. But if you want to winnow and you don't want to use what I'm using there, these are blowers. These are like 60 or $70. Lasco makes everybody's, like Stanley doesn't make this, but it'll give you a real nice directional airflow. So that one over there, we were always blowing, and that's a real problem because now you're blowing husk all over. You try to do it inside, you have husk. So I woke up one morning and I'm saying, well, where's the cheap motor? All right, dryers have cheap motors. So I bought a $25 dryer, took it apart, and I have a cutoff wheel, $20. You can buy these handheld cutoff wheels. Took the dryer apart, and then I just cut this right out. This section, I just, takes maybe 10 minutes. You can cut this out. So this is a, it says, uh, where is it? Somewhere it says, use motor only in closed dryer. So. <laughs> That's a message. <laughs> but if you want to call that a clothes dryer, it's in a clothes dryer. So this is the part, like this up here, the air, your little drums up there, the air gets sucked in here, and it gets blown out here out of your house, right? So third horsepower draws about 350 watts. I have a little amp meter, so I could verify that. Turns out electric motors, you would think, start drawing higher as they go under load, they draw. They just, I have a one horsepower motor, it draws six amps, whether it's under load or not. So that was sort of another learning that, why get a one horsepower motor if you're never gonna use that much horsepower? So this one third, some of them could probably get away with a quarter, but. 
So I had this, and I was starting to take it apart, and all I was going to do was use this motor because it's already mounted for me and it's got some flex. Then I all of a sudden said, well, wait a minute, I've got an impeller here. Can I use that? So for those of you that saw it run, we're all of the mechanism is back here. And on this one, I'm using a chain rather than a serpentine belt. What happened to me was I stopped getting high production, because I can get about 90% uh, when I run it through. All of a sudden, I was getting 70, 60, and I didn't know why. Because everything is spinning, and usually it's the gap. Turned out, if these, this belt loosens at all, this, the slow one, will start going as fast as the fast one, and now you're just pushing it through. It's not holding. They're just going through. So to solve that problem, since I didn't, since it's going to my son and he might not tend to it as well as he should, I said, well, what if I put a chain on it? It's not going to loosen. And the price is maybe $20 more. But with the chain, you set it, you forget it, you don't have to worry about your belt stretching. So that's what's back here. So we're going to run it through. It's going to come out. Um, Oh, no. Can the camera see basically down here? Not really. All right. So down underneath here, the rice is coming down, and it has energy. So we have a couple of plates where the rice comes down, bounces off. And what I've done with the vacuum with this uh, dryer is underneath here, this is just ductwork that you get at a hardware store. I have a gap. I have air blowing in this way and up. And I can adjust the air coming on up from the bottom, because I only want to pull out husk and immature. I don't want patty. I don't want rice. So I set this, and it just sucks the husks up. If I want to test it, I set everything up and let it blow into a container, and then I see if I have rice or patty in it. If I don't, then I know I've got it set correctly. Here, I left this open just because it's good show and tell. It's the impeller. The husks come up. Back here, I've got a PVC pipe that I run. The dryer motor is protected by uh, just some mild steel with a screen on it. And then I have this PVC pipe that's here, so it's drawing air in to keep this motor cool. So that's about it. Ah, we got the separator. All right, so we talked about the separator. For $50, you can buy one of these motors. This is a vibrating motor, right? So you can take, and this is the initial idea was, we'll just have something with holes in it, and we'll just put this on it, and we'll vibrate it. It does work. So it just goes, doo -doo 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 -doo, and it, the rice goes through, and you kind of shake it with your hand, and I attach that. So that's what I was going to put on here. But then it was like, this was probably a week ago. I went, well, wait a minute. I have. Uh, enough energy to run a separator. A separator almost needs nothing. So I have these eighth-inch holes. Works for my son's rice. So what we're doing is, as this turns, it's going to pop this up and down. And then the rice slowly goes down. The rice drops through, and the patty goes off. Um, and that's pretty much everything right there. This is my dust collection. You can buy this. This came from Rockler, any of the people that sell uh, woodworking stuff, because they want to collect the dust. So I just bought one of those. That's it. We uh, tested it. This, today, it did 60 pounds an hour. So this one did 60. This one, the clock didn't work, so we don't know. But I think this one, because you're running away with a bike, it's maybe 20 to 30. 40, you've really got to work. You need an athlete. So are there any questions? Because that's pretty much the end.
was going to comment on it, is that when you're, the, um, the thing that he didn't mention about with the bike one is that you, you can be running that hauler and the thresher at the same time. And even if you're not threshing, the, the thresher is really nice because this winter when we were running it, it's a big flywheel. So you actually, once you start getting it going, it, I pedaled it for like an hour and, and I didn't get tired at all. Because it's just like, you just keep going because the flywheel wants it to go. What about when you're putting, when you're threshing? It's almost no, when you're actually it's threshing, you can't really tell that you're, you're doing it. Yeah, once you start going. Yeah, that was surprising, Bob. When you're threshing your rice, it, it almost takes no energy to thresh rice. Because you're doing this, and it might take, I don't know, about how, a watt, right? But you're actually putting in 20 or 30 watts. So you're, it's no energy to, to knock your rice off. All right. Nope. Are you going to go open source with this design and put some yeah. details online and stuff like that? Right. So this is going to go up either on, probably on this web page, their web page. We'll go through it. But this was the test to see if it was worth it. So based on your response, then we'll put the effort in to say, well, here's how you can really make it. Oh, yeah. Great. great. What, what were the pre-industrial ways of hauling rice? You pound it with a stick, and I'm telling you, they still do it, and they think it's great because they love broken rice. <laughs> but if you asked a farmer today who said, I'm going to grow 300 pounds of rice to stand there and do this, might not want to do that. Ah, oh, well then, are you saying that's okay then? Well, in that case. That's why it worked. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, I have a question about, about scaling this up. Um, you know, it, it seems like, you know, with the bicycle powered thing, it, it seems like it's all um, quite functional, works great. Uh, do you think that, you know, could you, could you use a, 12-inch roller instead of a 4-inch roller? I mean, is there... there? It takes a certain amount of energy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now, so I have two problems. The ones you see that are commercial mills, right. they're running at, the motors, motors run at either 1,700 RPM or 3,500 RPM, right? Now, Asia might be different, but that's our normal RP, RPM range, right? Yeah. So when they build it, they build it with very nice balance, bearings are really good, Everything's heavy, so they can spin. Yeah. So I'm spinning at 400 RPM, and the slow one's down around 250, 300. Right. So if I start adding more rice, I got to put in more watts. Right. So a human can't do that. A human is good for an eighth of a horsepower that they can basically ride. Uh, I was heard Lance Armstrong is a quarter of a horsepower. But so it's not a lot of power. What I would suggest would be. If you're, you're doing it with bikes, I would take that thresher idea and make a bigger flywheel. And once you get that, you know, if you're real gentle and get that thing going, then you might be able to do more. Because we were thinking with a motor, like if his motor, yeah. I could tie, I could get, I could build one. I then could tie the next one, couple it directly to it. No more of the other pulleys. Now I'd have two running. With the third one. So it's a three speed bike and 50 pound flywheel or something like that? Yeah, why not? Well, well I'm using the sprocket, so you got to use. Right, right. Uh, here's another little thing that you're going to find out. This is a bike chain, right? So this is, no, it's, it's half inch length between, these are half inch, so that makes it a number 40. So then you go, well, hold it, I want to use my bike to drive that. I'm going to go and just order a sprocket, right? This is a bike sprocket, so it's like that. This is what you're going to buy on an industrial level. It's got to run at 1,000 pounds. So I actually started trying to grind it to see if I can get this to work. So that was not, that was not such a good idea, because let me hold up this chain. And this chain, this is probably $8 worth of chain. So that's the difference. So this chain is much wider here, but it's still a half inch. So this is a number 40. If you buy a number 40 chain, it'll go on the little sprocket of a bike. And then it'll fit all these sprockets off of uh, industrial level. All right. Yep. 
What um, the one you ordered from India? Yeah. What led you to pick that particular company and model? It's the only one I could find. They, there, any of you who have started to do the search, you will find there. It's just so hard. It's just not there. And a two-man hauler. That I actually Ben Folk has a video of him doing a hauler. I sent that to this company saying, is this what you have? And then they responded with, we think it's very similar. But you bought it in April and you're still waiting for it? I gave him money in April. And it was like, you send us money, we'll ship it in three weeks. I hope so. I may never see it. Yeah. It's like, it could be lost money. I, uh, a friend of mine that does the uh, importing, he thinks they're legitimate, but we're not sure. Because there, they could go without electricity for a week. But they don't answer the phone like a company. So we'll, we'll see. Now, let me go to this. Exactly, exactly. I want to, where's my last page? And they supposedly put it on a boat in August? Yeah, I mean, it was, I asked for my money back four weeks ago. Yeah. And I said, all right, you didn't meet the deadlines. Wire us the money back. And a friend of mine, Mike, this is what he does. He imports from India and Vietnam. And he said, all right, we want our money back. No paperwork, nothing. We get a response two days later. Oh, yeah, it's been shipped. It's on its way to a port in India. Then it goes on to a tender ship that takes it to the big ship. So we don't know. Yeah, my ship may have sailed. We're, but I have no choice. And now it's, it's going to come into the New York Harbor. I don't have any company to send it to me. I, I don't know what we're going to do when it gets there. Do you have a bill of lading or any documentation? That I'm counting on Mike to save me on that. We, we don't know. It, it should. But he said, because he brings in containers, normally you have freight forwarders. And everything is set. I don't get any of that. We'll see. Throw your money. Okay. Yeah. Just to clarify, you were looking for hand power, hand power. Right. That was not like the yeah. motorized one. <coughs> $5,000 to $20,000. You were looking to see if you could get that. Right. And, and right, right. And that's all you So what we also need is for those of you who have purchased, like you bought a really good hauler. And if we tried to buy his hauler, we're going to spend close to $10,000. Now, he knew somebody. Yeah, that one you see. Yeah, yeah. That's, I talked to them, and they would not give me much more than, look, it's $12,000. I said, no, I want an inexpensive one. It's $12,000. You want a separator? Another $12,000. Now, there's a uh, centrifugal one back there that Calibration Plus sells for $5,000. So it, it's an impeller style. So it, they are available. I mean, you can do it, but you just got to be prepared. John, if you can talk to uh, What's the scaling on those hullers? So the back to the land one, or just even that one? Do you have any sense on, you know, you want to do that for an acre, or you want to do that for half an acre, or does anyone have any knowledge onto that? So are we talking about the thresher or the hauler? Uh, or the whole idea? Well, these guys, you have a thresher, like, how many pounds? The back to the land people say that they think their machine is suitable for up to an acre. But they figure you're going to get pretty tired if you try to use it for after that. Yeah. Now, could that one be hooked up to a motor? Does it have a shaft? I have no idea. It works on a rotary principle, but they make it like a, a treadle. Right. But you should be able, like, that's what I would do. I would say, all right, I got a lot of rice. I'm going to get one of these low power motors because for that, quarter, quarter horsepower. Yeah. You could get a dryer motor easy for free and drive that forever. It wouldn't even see the load. And you could actually blow air across while you're threshing and get rid of the chaff that comes in and, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. So uh, that whole thing with Satake and Yamamoto, it's the same thing, talking Calibration Plus. I was looking into it and, uh, yeah, you were looking at about 11 to 12 grand. Yeah. So I contacted Mia and she talked to her mom and dad and they had paid significantly less. Right. So 
I had actually talked to Calibration. What really got me going was I, I had talked to Calibration Plus last fall. Does everybody hear this? So he talked to Calibration Plus last fall about and then, these and the units. Price, he gave me the price, which fortunately I had saved that price. So <laughs> when I called him again, yeah. this is after the yen has probably dropped in values you know, upwards of 30%. I'm thinking, oh, so I'm going to get a much yeah. better deal. Well, the price went through the roof. It went up. Oh, it went way up. Yeah, 12 grand. Ah, right? Now that's not the table top. That's like very similar to oh, what... Oh, this, this big one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Very okay. similar. Okay. 12, anyway, so I'm trying to figure out. So I, I ask a friend of a friend to check out the price. What does this cost in Japan? It's $2,700 purchased in Japan. Value? Yeah. $2,700. $2, $2, so I talked to another guy yeah. who actually makes this little combine harvester that he's in Massachusetts. Is that key? Eddie Key. Yeah. And Eddie said he could have it landed in Manhattan for me for $3,600. Okay, so now we're so getting it's, into the it's, price. It's of reason reasonable. reasonable. Right, and right. something's wrong with Taki in Texas and, and Calibration Plus. I don't know what they're doing, but I mean, they're taking advantage. Yeah, right, right, right. Because once you get down into that $3,500, because my idea was I had to be 10% of the true cost, you know, if you had to buy one. So now, once you're down to 3,500, a farmer might want to do it. They would start out maybe at this low, low level, and then that would be the next one. So, I mean, it hasn't happened yet. I don't oh, yet. have you ordered it? Uh, no. I'm you got money? To, actually, I wanted to come here first. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I thought Eddie was going to be here today, but he's not. Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, he, could, he could make it today. Right, maybe right. next year he'll come. What's, what's the name of the company? There's also a company in Japan. There's a company in Florida oh, yeah. that imports the rice. The hauler that also polishes does about a thousand pounds an hour, and you pay five thousand dollars for it. And you can just buy it directly from this import. Now, is that the guy grain? No, these no, guys, a different company, because they do that and they say. But you can't. It always polishes, right? It will not give you brown rice. Right. Yeah. No, no, it will. Big. It will. It, it will de haul it, but it, it's different. It's an upright machine, and it has several stages, and you can put in the the, the penny rice, and then it will de haul it, or you can let it go further, and then it will also polish it. So yeah. you can break it out, because some of these, the guy I talked to you that uh, you can get these rolls from, he said no. He goes, I it polish polishes, it. that's it. Well, then you can just check the line, one. and they have a diagram of the, the machine, and oh, I really? called them. And what's that, five? Five thousand. Well, at the time it was forty-two, and the biggest size was forty-six. Right, right. And what's okay. the site or what's the company? Uh, I have to email it. Yeah. So, any other questions, comments? Anybody else? Bottom machine. Anybody else hauling rice? Somebody. You mentioned Eddie Key. Do, Mia, do you do you know Eddie Key? Mia, do you know Eddie Key? Do you do you know? I have never met him. I've only communicated through emails. Okay. Do you know people who've done business with him or what? What results? I know that he um, he knows. He he was given his contact information was given to me from someone at the meeting conference. So he this uh, machine combine can be used for wheat as well. It can be used for any grain. So there are people he's been working with people um, to get the machines for wheat growers. So we have some kind of a track record in this country? I think so. I don't know anyone personally who's gotten it. Does he have a company name or is it just Yeah, it's called I think it's EQ Machinery. One word and uh, I think if you Google it you'll find it. I think you also email that or get in contact. Okay. That machine looks really awesome. It looks like really nice. So do we have any more questions for Don before we continue on? Yes. Right here. Think. Okay, he's got that little holder. He's got an acre to do. Come on. Yes, back. I know some new ones. I'm just wondering, are we done with this project? Are we done with this project? Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Truth will tell. 
We'll see. We're almost done. It's really very easy just to take a tarp and put it on the ground and put a big rock in the middle of the tarp and then just beat the whole stalk onto the rock and you're, you know, and then just throw away the straw when you're done. It works really, I mean, it's not very difficult at all. For a small scale, I think it makes sort of more sense than using a threshing machine. Right, so if you only have a bit, because yeah, I mean, Ben Falk easier. shows doing it in a canoe. Right, I, mean, I think that even, you know, even yeah. if you're dealing with like a thousand square feet or, or more, I think that, that, you know, a threshing machine probably isn't really necessary. You don't need it. No, yeah. I mean, you can just do it, you can just do it on a rock. And um, uh, these guys were mentioning to me, you know, traditionally, um, before, you know, the pre-industrial technique was um, to, you know, mash it underfoot. And I guess, you know, they're, they're saying it's not very difficult to do. I've never seen it done that way. Um, hauling it underfoot? Hauling it underfoot, yeah. We have a dance. Um, <laughs> I talked to a guy who was here whose parents owned a plantation in India, and he said labor there is extremely cheap. Because I said, what do they do? And he said, People, because initially he said that, they would just walk on mats, and then I went, yeah, but your foot's pretty soft. And he said, well, what they did was, then they, then he called or talked to somebody, and they would have a post, a brass cap, and they would walk around and just pound it. So, because labor, there's so many people, and labor's so cheap, that they just walked around and did it. Um, and also for the separation, too, uh, you know, if you can take, like, a, a large, Plate. He's called, it's called non glue in the power, yeah. but um, right. a large a large plate Sample. or something. Yeah, the yeah, a, a, a woven basket style yeah. plate. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sort of toss it and kind of beat it on the bottom at the same time. You can really quickly separate the grain from the chaff. It's just a certain level. Right, right. The end of a yeah, the end of a right. 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 Yeah. 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 We do that. This is how we do our roots. Right, and here we have a fan. But the, the, that's not separation, that's winnowing. So the question is then, when you're at 80%, if you still have 20% patty in there, that's not saleable. You have got to get, so what people tend to do is just keep running it through their system. Which is not good, the polishing. Right, so you don't want to do that. So that's why you need to separate that. So we got to make sure our terminology, you're winnowing, but separating is you're separating the patty from the rice. Right, now I think that typically the larger scale mills have a fan and part of the, like, yeah, you know, That's winnowing. Right, right. Well, in the, in the machine. Yeah. As it's right, separated, right. Just what I do. Right, just like what you did. Yeah, you just suck air through it. You just suck air through it, right. Yeah. And then it, it ends up, and it comes out pretty clean in those larger But larger then what they do is have a separator after okay. You look at it. You know, go on the internet and you'll see in mills. You can buy each one is like twenty or thirty thousand or fifty thousand. Right. You just stack them up. How many tons you want to do a day? Mm -hmm. But they'll go rollers, this, 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 winnower. Then at the bottom, they'll have a separator. Yeah. And that separator is either a compartment style, it's a sieve style, or it's, it's oscillating. That the next time they need it's really complicated. Right. They do a great job. But uh, Andy and I might work on that. Well, a separator that's for home use, because who wants to spend $15,000 right, right, so you got to design it. So we have a... Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have the... Um, we'll talk about it. If you do the outcome, it's not a way like a big spray or something like that. Yeah. That's the something that I did actually. Yeah. 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 You know that did not through the process of it. All right, so I'm going to repeat what he said. Your idea works, right. except that the rice varieties that are coming out right, are, no, just like, they're adhered more. Yeah. So the hitting it with the rock is more difficult. Okay. So that's why he says, yeah, that works for the rice that are growing, but now that the rice has more uh, tenacity, mm -hmm. you, you, a, a thresher style might be better. Yeah. Right? Yep. Are these different varieties? Are the, is that right. gonna, uh, like different varieties of rice is talking about? Is that going to change the diameter of the hole that your separator would be? Right. So you need various separators depending on your right. So this a normal separator is not a sieve. You don't use these. Just so happened that the rice that 
these guys are growing, yeah. just oh, happens yeah. to fit an eighth inch yeah. hole. Eighth inch hole is yours. And this, right? And I drilled holes to figure out which one it was, and then went, oh, it's an eighth inch. I just bought a stainless steel sheet for 57 bucks from my master car. And I didn't, we have a polymer one. Yeah. They make a wide range of hole sizes. No, they don't. If you're at a small scale, you can buy drills that go in wire sizes, so we're talking thousands of an inch different. But this is uh, polypropylene with H and Soul, $17. If you're growing this variety that it appears to be the rice here. And then this is half of his. So I can do that. Or, and when Andy gets done in developing the uh, compartment style, it, the idea of the uh, Sataki makes one where it's, it's going, there are two plates, you have them all stacked up, it's going like this, and it's shaking it, right? And it's got a little index that match your rice. And the rice climbs, it literally climbs up the indents, and your patty, and if they want it to be 80% or less, floats over the top and then. So it does that, right? So, what you have to there is your indents have to match your rice. So if you have long grain, you have a problem, right? So a big grower, no problem, you guys climb. There's a compartment one where we haven't figured out how to make it work. Where they have angles, they cut it at an angle, they go back and forth, the rice falls and the paddy climbs. But you have to have the right oscillation, the right pitch, but it'll separate any rice. So if we're going to do it, that's the one we would try to um, develop. Because uh, we now, Andy went out and bought a DC motor with a uh, variable frequency on it. So we could adjust the speeds, whatever we want. But that, if we could do it, I think it would help a lot. It's just going to be yeah, I'm curious what that is. I don't know. It's hard for me to understand what you mean. Maybe we can talk. There's a PowerPoint out there that yeah. goes through that. Yeah. Have you tried any varieties that you've seen like long odds? I only built for my son. That was the number one project. And then it then it was, all right, I've done this for Josh, and I contacted her and sort of put myself in the spot of going, oh, I really gotta do this. So that's why it's just this one variety. The other ones, pulling, you just adjust the gap. You know, you just look down and say, well, I'm going to adjust this gap. And if you guys ever do this, go wide, not close. Because if you start close, you're going to crunch it. What I do, and you're going to wear your rollers out, I go wide, and I go, all right, and I actually drop rice kernels in, go, all right, that rice just stops. Then I start there, because the wider the gap, the less wear. And this one, I mean, most of you saw what it did. We're at close to 90, and it's simply because it's commercial. Building. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.